Good evening. Welcome to the December <coughs> meeting of the council. Our first order of business tonight is uh, to ask uh, Lewis to give our invocation. Most gracious and kind, loving Father, we thank you for the day that you've given us. We thank you for this opportunity to conduct business for the city of Hamlin. We would ask for your guidance, your direction. And Lord, we thank you most of all for this time of the year that you sent your son to die on a cross and to be born at this time of year. And that's what we're celebrating, Lord, is his birth. And Lord, we thank you for each one that's here. We would pray that you would guide us in all that we do, make correct decisions, good decisions, and we'll give you the praise, honor, and glory for it all. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Gentlemen, you have before you the agenda for tonight. Are there any changes or additions or deletions that may need to be made to it at this time? If not, I'd ask for a motion. So moved. Second. I got a motion. Second, Second from Mr. Clewis. Motion from Okay. I don't think Pat saw it yet. Oh, that to include the closed session? Okay. That one? No, the, the motion needs to be to accept the agenda, um, but we need to put a, a item on to approve those closed session meetings from last month and the month before. We haven't gotten to that yet. <laughs> it needs Just to be added next. to Oh, okay. 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 The additional items that I, that I have here, of course, are the. Are you talking about the um, the minutes? Or are you talking about the add-on for the? Okay. All right. We'll be adding items on for the closed session, under General Statute 143.318.11. Uh, a is attorney-client privilege to discuss uh, Veach versus the city of Hamlet. Uh, A5 to discuss a real estate acquisition. And A6 to discuss a personnel matter. I rescind my motion Thank and you. make a motion to include these, this, uh, this uh, addendum to the uh, closed session. Thank you, Mr. President. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. You have before you now... Uh, September the 9th, 2014, regular meeting and closed session, and also minutes from November the 10th of 2014, regular meeting and closed session. Are there any changes or additions or deletions that need to be made to those minutes? Um, we actually can't vote on those. Can we? Your signature's not on that one. Okay, we need Pat and Jerry. And then there's one, two on this one as well. This is the time. I mean, you want me to? You want to make this motion at the end of the meeting and let me peruse oh, these is, as we go? Because I, if I initial them now, I hadn't read them, and and that's, I'm not going to do that on TV live. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read these these minutes, you know, throughout as we go. I don't see me. I don't. All right, we'll uh, we'll just postpone that till we get down. Yeah, move those minutes the to the You'll end. You'll remind me to make sure I take care of that. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, this time uh, we'll go over. We'll skip over item four and take it up toward the end of the meeting. This time, item five is comments from attendees. If we have anyone here tonight that wants to make a comment for anything that's not on the agenda, please feel free to come forward and uh, give us your ideas and thoughts. Okay, if not, we'll close comments from attendees. Uh, item number six, under new business, uh, we have Mr. Ken Anderson with us tonight to present the, uh, our audit. Mr. Anderson, thank you for coming tonight. Well, thank you for having me. Um, I'm sure you probably recall I, I print out these little two-page summaries, and this is what I want to go go over with the highlights. Does everyone have a copy? Do, do y'all need a copy? Okay, we're good. All right. 
okay, the first, at the top of the page, about uh, we're talking about fund balance here. And of course, the, the city here has two major funds, the general fund and the water sewer fund. And you can see the, this is unassigned fund balance, it used to be called unrestricted fund balance. You can see the last six years of history for that. Uh, the water sewer fund, of course, has grown continually throughout the years. The, uh, the general fund the last several years has, has been in a slight decline. One thing I would, I would make note to you, the, um, the percentages, there is a minimum percentage that the local government commission mandates. It's 8%, that's 8% of undesignated or unassigned fund balance divided into general fund expenditures. While you're still in real good shape right now, 36%, which is four and a half times the 8%, uh, you can see that in the last three years, there's been a six and a half percent drop in that. So something you might want to, when you go to your budget here in a few months, you might want to, you know, take that into consideration because, you know, sometimes the, the, once you get into the decline, it can continue to go. So we just need to need to watch that. But right now you're, you're in good shape. Below that you have the uh, tax collections. And of course the, the city is responsible for the middle collections, which is property tax. And you can see that by and large, the collection per percentage has been pretty consistent. You're right around 96% really about all those years. I think the state average is around 96% also. So you're in pretty good shape. Now the one that's noticeable, what, noticeable there is the uh, vehicle tax. <clears throat> and what occurred with that is starting first of the year, Department of Motor Vehicles started collecting that tax. So as you can see, the average rate below that's probably high 70s. Now we're up to 94%. And this has pretty much been the case with, with all municipalities. If you will flip the page. And this right here will reference the actual report itself. On page one, it's the independent auditor's report. You received what's called an uh, unmodified opinion. We used to call it unqualified opinion. That's in essence a good audit report. Page 17. You have the, uh, the general fund. Uh, you actually had uh, revenue exceeded expenditures. In essence, that's an increase in that fund of 44,266. Then the other major fund on page 19, this is the water sewer fund. You also, in this case, you actually had a decline. Expenditures exceeded revenues by 189,000. I would say that the main component of that decline was depreciation expense. Depreciation expense was $575,000, which is a non-cash expense. So it can, it can make these numbers look a little skewed. Nevertheless, it's a decline, but it's not from a cash basis, it's not a decline. I don't wanna to go too far with that. Uh, item four on page 40, this is the uh, long-term debt. First category, governmental activities, which is the, the general fund. You can see you started the year with about one and three quarters million. You ended up the year with slightly over $2.1 million. That increase, a lot of that increase was due to other post-employment benefits, which is uh, additional health care benefits. When someone retires, you still have a retirement. You're obligated to pay beyond their, their term of employment. Uh, that increased $303,000 of, of the increase. Uh, pension obligation, which is police separation, there's also uh, a liability that has to be recorded for that. That increased about $19,000. The only piece of debt that you had as far as real debt was some vehicles that you purchased. That was about $168,000 for that. <clears throat> and then the, the business type activity, the water sewer debt, that, uh, that was a slight decrease in there, about $7,000. There was actually no new debt there. Uh, the increase of that was really due to, uh, or it was, even though it was a decrease, it would have been a, it, even though it was a decrease, it would have been a substantial decrease if it had not been for OPEB, other post-employment benefits, that increased 158,000. And I think vacation ex expense was flat. So you actually would have had a decline of about 165,000. Uh, the fifth item on page 29, there were, <coughs> there were, um, Two budget over expenditures, both of them in the general fund. One was uh, public safety, the other was debt service. Uh, you know, there, there are statutory violations. You just need to keep up with that a little bit better in the future. 
uh, there, were, there were no compliance audits. That's single audits. A lot of times you have a power bill audit or you have a community development block grant. A lot of times those, those are grants that uh, towns receive. There was none of that type of money or, or not subject to single audit this year, so we had none of that. The, the report itself has been uh, submitted to the local government commission, has been approved. That's about all I have as far as the, the work itself. You know, Jill, I think, is doing a very good job providing the information, good time, and that's all I have. If you have any questions, I'll be more happy to try to answer them. Anyone on council have questions for Mr. Uh, Anderson? I'd like to thank you for the fine job. Um, I hadn't been on council in several years, but it's, it's a great presentation of our financial status. I have one question that doesn't pertain to what you did, and I don't want to put you on the spot. Um, I think me and you talked a while back when I was on council before about the uh, practice of uh, charging an admission at our sporting events, for our juvenile or youth sporting events. Mm -hmm. um, any ideas how we need to uh, address that to where we're in guidelines as far as taking in money, um, not giving out uh, tickets? Uh, well, whatever. anytime you get into that situation where you're talking about a dollar here, a dollar there, it's always a cost benefit. Years ago when you brought this up to me, I got with Marshall right after that and we, we ran the numbers along with Mitch and we looked at the numbers in regards to the additional personnel it would take to, in essence, you've got one person there, what are you going to have? Somebody looking over their back, what's the cost of that? Uh, I think at that time we decided that the system was, considering the amount of money you're talking about. Uh, we went through, we just laid it all out and we decided. Do you think we're good with that? I think you're fine. You know, most municipalities don't charge admission. There's always going to be that uh, risk. But what's the cost benefit of that? Having two people stand there, three people, you know, two people can take just as easily as one can take, yeah. you know, at some point. Well, it's not the issue of anybody taking, it's just the issue of the keeping it in, in line so you'll know. Exactly what you what we do is, well, to give you an idea, what we do is we analytically compare the revenues from year to year. So when we look at, say, the soccer program or the baseball program, any of these programs, if last year it generated twenty thousand dollars worth of revenue, we, we suspect it's going to be somewhere around that amount this year. Same with the expenditures. So we analytically compare these numbers. If they were to be uh, vary significantly, then then we would delve a little bit farther. It, you know, my experience has been the numbers have all been throughout the years have been pretty consistent. Okay. I Just seen as long that. as you feel comfortable with us being in compliance with. There's no perfect system unless you want to, there again, it's a cost benefit. Everything's a cost benefit. Do you want to have more people to the cost of associated with these fees? I think uh, overall, I think you're fine. Okay, good deal, thank you. Anyone else have a question? Mr. Anderson, thank you so mm -hmm. much. We thank appreciate you. what you do. You do a fine job for us. And thank you. Hope you have a good Christmas. You too. <clears throat> Item number seven is uh, at this time we'll recognize Mr. Robert Singletary, who wishes to <coughs> present plaques to the city of Hamlet. <clears throat> Looks like you did a lot of work. what you do for us. Thank you. 
Item number eight is uh, surplus property. Adoption of resolution number 2014-08, sale of personal property. You should have a copy of that in front of you. And uh, the items that are listed on here at this time are a Samsung Galaxy 2, uh, Sonam Armor, Motorola Milestone, Motorola Quantico, an LG Banner, Samsung Messenger Touch, Altel Kyocera Passport, and an Altel, Altel Air Card. And that's the only items that are on there at this time. Your wishes, Council. I'm sorry, one more time. Yeah, what is the Sona Marmor? <coughs> all oh, okay. Except the all Except for the air card. Mm -hmm. Make a motion that we declare these items surplus. I have a motion from uh, Mr. McQueen and a second from uh, <coughs> Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, any further comments, gentlemen? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Item number eight, adoption of resolution number 20. We got that one. Item number nine. Uh, consideration of ABC board agreement, and you should have a copy of that available to you. And uh, we do this, what, every year? I believe it's, uh, Mr. Mayor, it's, it's every five years. Every five, I five years, okay. And I, I feel like we've drafted up a pretty good policy here. The ABC board is real, real happy. They've been real pleased, and um, I uh, kept the agreement to the same terms. Um, and um, the majority of the latter part of this agreement just sort of um, outlines the distribution of revenue um, as, as uh, according to the general statutes 18B-805, that sort of outlines uh, where the uh, distribution of revenue is shared to. Uh, we share the revenue with the county, the health department, with law enforcement and uh, ALE officers, uh, as well as uh, what's left with the ABC board. I would make a motion that we accept the agreement with the ABC board as presented okay, for another five-year term. I have a motion on the floor. I have, I have one question. Okay. The, the five years, is that pretty much standard? Um, Mr. Morphis, I've asked you. It seemed like a long time. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I didn't. I read over the agreement and didn't have any objection to the time period. I can look into what other jurisdictions are doing, but don't know off the top of my head. And would Councilman Preston, would you be able to act on this or would you have a... Uh, point of clarification, yes, um, that would... Excuse me, go ahead. Go ahead sir. I was just going to say that, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is just the agreement between the ABC board and the city. Okay. And so um, a portion of the revenue is shared, it goes to the ABC mm -hmm. board. And they use that money to sort of upkeep the building and that sort of thing. Um, um, the, the money that would go to law enforcement, to ALE officers, uh, is, is a whole separate uh, okay. revenue stream. Yeah, okay. And, and, and that's set by statute. So no okay. matter what we do here, doesn't... It, it's going to happen anyway. Yeah, effectively has no bearing on Councilman Bressler one way or the other. Yeah. Second. Got a motion, motion and a second. <coughs> Are there any other further comments on this? Questions? Changes, okay. If, yes, go ahead. <coughs> cool. 
Correct, to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Okay, all in favor. Thank you. Uh, next item of business, item number 10, is the approval of tax releases. And there should be a copy that was left on your desk to change. And the total amount of money refunded was $890.68. And this was <coughs> pretty much per the county. This looks like a bunch of errors. Yeah, there's the motion again, to approve. Yeah, again, this was, let me say it again, that this was a number of errors on the part of the uh, state collecting, uh, uh, collecting vehicle taxes on vehicles that were not in the city limits of Hamlet. So I guess this will continue for a while until they get it worked out. <coughs> so I have a motion from uh, Mr. Bowie. Second. Got a second from Mr. Clewis. Any further word on that? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, at this time, uh, we're going to have a discussion of the audio system for the council chambers, and I'll at this time ask for comments from city manager. Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to clarify the um, so um, per this council's request to sort of research updating um, our sound system, the city contacted um, a number of companies asking them for proposals for work to be done to update our sound system. Um, each quote included different services because we did not necessarily specify what we wanted done. We just told them that we wanted to update our system. And so um, some of these, um, uh, we, you know, uh, we, you know, we didn't, spe yeah, we didn't specify what the city specifically wanted as far as which, you know, what equipment, and what quantity, whether it's wireless versus, uh, you know, uh, hardwired. But um, and this is uh, the prices vary as a result, so we don't have quite a, an apples to apples comparison. If the city council does wish to go ahead and have the sound system updated, that would eventually require a budget amendment. A budget amendment would also need a specific amount, and it would be helpful to get some clarification on what specifically the board would like done, whether or not to go ahead with the project and pursue the staff's recommendation. If the council wishes to wait until the next budget cycle, we would do that as well. Um, I, um, I have very limited expertise in um, IT, and that's why I would, would entertain um, Mr. Garner, uh, our IT director, to s sort of speak about the, the quotes and what some of the companies um, uh, mentioned as far as you know, what they recommended, as well as what he recommends. No, what I did when I initially decided to kind of get some quotes together is I wanted to give you kind of an idea of your high end and your low end. The, the very lowest one is a completely hardwired system, and it doesn't have quite as high quality microphones and things like that. So that would be, you know, your, your low ball. Um, the one in the middle, I believe it's from Music Masters, is a combination of both wired microphones and wireless microphones. The, uh, you know, up here and over here, we would have our wired microphones. And then out here, we would have our wireless. Now, uh, the microphones and equipment on there is pretty high on the top end. Um, the third one, which was from uh, Sand Hills Theater in Southern Pines, it is completely wireless. Um, now, as far as the quality of microphones, they would be there in, in your mid-range. And um, I just didn't really have kind of a direction that we wanted to go, so I'd have tried to give you as much to look at as you thought. Now, you know, if it was up to me, I would say, you know, do your wired mics along here um, and then just do wireless around here. I wouldn't recommend trying to, you know, just get through doing, you know, getting cheap microphones and cheap, cheap equipment. If we did something like this, I would at least want, you know, mid-range to high-range sort of equipment. And if there's consensus amo among the board, um, uh, staff and myself will sort of work toward uh, 
uh, that you know Zach's recommendation. Yeah, and you know once we kind of get what y'all are thinking about, we can give the people we're getting some quotes from some more information to go on. Now, I think we need to be sure that we uh, have a set of specifications as to what we want and that all that everybody gets. Right. I, That's the only way it's fair. And I, I think it should, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was a 20. I think it was close to 20. I thought it was 11.5 was the high end. <laughs> yeah, it was something like that. <laughs> right. I think the, 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 some of the biggest issues is when we have a lot of people in here, it's when you get outside the door when it's standing room only and they can't hear outside. And then you have people that can't, you know, due to illnesses or whatever that can't make it here, they're having issues hearing it on, you know, on, on TV. Right. So that's kind of, we got to fix both. And when the air conditioning unit comes on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah. if we can hardwire one up in the ceiling. Yeah. Down. Now, the idea as far as the speakers would be, you know, generally speaking, some, some ceiling speakers, yeah. um, depending these, on. These bows, I, I don't think. I think these are Bose speakers in the ceilings, and I don't know if they work. Uh, they, they do work. They do work, so, don't they? Uh, they? Yeah. So. No, we don't need that. We got one here, but sometimes yeah. that'll feed back. That one right there is pretty much gone. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, uh, most of the people that we, well, all of the people that I spoke to, um, they kind of had something in mind so that you guys can hear yourselves talk as well. Some people had some speakers mounted up here, and others had, you know, actual microphone stands with a speaker in it. So, if you are all comfortable with, you know, maybe say a more hardwired system, which would probably be on the lower end, cost-wise, um, we will pursue that. And we'll collect additional quotes from these three companies as well as uh, other companies that may be out there. Um, and sort of get uh, a, a cost comparison um, for you know, the same um, uh, terms of service. Has anybody considered uh, what Rockingham has? Everybody seems to be very well pleased with Rockingham system, the TV presentation and everything. Uh, that might be something you might at least need to look at and compare yeah. and see what they got. Most definitely. Because it seems to be working very well. I, I've um, that I would uh, love to have their system. I would, I would guess that their system would cost much more uh, to, to put that yeah, in. Yeah, they here. probably got. Right. Yeah. Well, they probably got the Cadillac version, but still, <clears throat> we could see what they got and see how that how we could adapt something to here. And I believe, it's a good system. Yeah, and I believe that the gooseneck microphones are very, very popular these days. So we, yeah. You know, those, those I feel like they'd be better than the lapels. Just well, that's what they have. You know what you're speaking yeah. into. Yeah, we, we don't have one in the mic. I've never passed around the crowd. We don't have room to Yeah, definitely. No, the, the idea would be to, um, <laughs> you know, have, a, have an extra one or two hardwired in case something goes wrong. Same thing for the wireless mics in case something goes wrong. You know, if, if y'all are trying to do a presentation up front, you could have an extra wireless mic, and we could just turn it on when needed. You just want the people to be able to hear it. That's yeah. the way this, you know. <coughs> and just make sure we're comparing apples to apples. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's not fair to the people um, giving these bids for one to give us a bid on Chief said a Cadillac version, and somebody else give us a, a, a lower version. Yeah. No, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I didn't really know what direction right. you wanted to go. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, I absolutely. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. And I appreciate what you did. I have, you got I have a couple of issues. One thing is we need to try. I'm a firm believer in doing business in Hamlet or doing business in Richmond County, so we need to try to get some more bids from here in the county if, if possible. 
Okay. Because, uh, we, you know, we have a hard enough time with our businesses here as it is. And uh, need, need, at least give them a chance. The other thing, gentlemen, is that we're going to have a number of budget issues that are going to come up in January, so we're going to have some tough decisions to make at the budget. So we need to kind of keep these things in mind when we start talking about buying things where we are and what we've got to look at. Thank you. We appreciate yep. that. No problem. Marcus, thank you. <clears throat> At this time, we'll go to item number 12 and look at departmental <coughs> reports. Uh, Chief Knight. Okay. Uh, Chief, where are we on the uh, fire truck run? What, what, what price? Mm -hmm. We're going to have to work on that. But David, step to the mic, please. <laughs> That's a good example of why we need it. <laughs> yeah, because we can hear you, but people at home won't. If I they, won't they won't have no idea what you're saying. We um, we had asked for 250 uh, in the budget process. We got cut back to 200 in, in hopes that we could find either a used truck or get a new truck at, at uh, a very reasonable price. Uh, we've, we've gone to the factory. we looked at the trucks. Uh, we've got one spec'd out. <clears throat> Uh, we cut every corner we could to, and still get a, a quality truck. Um, it still holds 2,000 gallons of water as, as the one that we are replacing. Um, this, it's got a lot larger pump on it than the one we're replacing, so we're getting a lot better truck than we, than we have now. Um, and it's about two fifteen and a half. We're about fifteen and a half thousand dollars over. Fifteen over to 200, that was budget. Yeah. I've talked to Jill about the money and uh, uh, and the city manager also, um, since this is going to be a loan, from my understanding, I'm talking for Jill now, but from my understanding, um, the, the money will be borrowed and will come in and then, you know, back out and, and keep the budget clear. But there's a payment also in uh, our budget for this year for the uh, first <laughs> annual payment. The additional money is that will, the truck will cost, say if it's $16,000 additional, all we got to come up with every year if it's a five-year loan is just divide that by five 3, or six years three thousand dollars so that would be the additional overrunnage this year if we were to go ahead and get on on the process it would be whatever the difference in the payment would be in borrowing that amount of money it wouldn't we had to come up with the whole entire 15 or sixteen thousand dollars so the only thing that's going to affect the budget with the overage and we knew there was going to be overage whenever we talked about this yeah, we were going to be mean, talking we, to try to find one we knew we wasn't going to make it at, at 200. Yeah. Um, Jill, how hard, difficult would it be to locate $3,000 that we would need for this year's portion of the payment? Um, Don't get the new leaf machine now. I'm afraid if we don't go ahead and do yeah, something, Yeah, th this is going. something we ran into last time, and we ended up with $140,000 that stretched into another budget because we let it go out too far, and then we went into the next year's budget, and we ended up $140,000 in there. And this is something that we talked about a few months ago and said we needed to start looking into it. We need to get it done. I don't want to continue to say we're going to get it done, we're going to get it done, and then we're going to flow three more months, and then we're going to be in next year's budget again with a $215,000 truck. The specs I got um, yeah, from the company is 180-day turnaround, uh, and they, they assured us if we turn it in, in in December that we would get the yeah. truck in by, by June 30th. See, that's, that's what well, I'm that's saying. What I told uh, David. My, my issue with it, if, if, if we wait and, and, and not do something, that <clears throat> the next one you find is not going to be 215. It's going to be 225, 230. Um, tell us again what truck you're replacing, the specs on the truck being replaced. The truck that we're replacing was a uh, truck that was built at the fire station back in 1983. It's a 1972 model truck. Let me stop you. Who built the truck? The men at the fire department. The fire department. Uh, to, and we got like eighteen thousand, twenty thousand dollars in the in the in the build of the truck over a six or seven month project. Um, the truck had um, hundreds of thousands of miles when it was when it was built. It was a over the road truck that hauled milk cross country 
and we put a tank on it and um, the older guys that are retired from the fire station now, Gene Ross, Stan Gardner, and those folks uh, did a lot of the, the fabrication and built the truck um, back in 1983. It's a 2,000 gallons of water. The problem is it's only got a 400 gallon a minute pump on it. So when we take the fire truck anywhere in the city limits or outside the city limits, we, get, we don't get any credit for the insurance rating because it's not, it's not certified because of the size of the pump. It's got to have at least a 750 gallon a minute pump to get credit to take it to a fire. Um, plus it's the road miles on it, um, the brakes, I mean, it's, it's just, it's, a, it's worn out. It's 40, over 40 plus years old. Um, Didn't we uh, have an issue here lately with the braking on that and we nearly mm -hmm. wrecked with it? Yes, sir. I'm ready to go ahead and, and make this happen. I mean, it's not, whenever we were talking about it, you mentioned 250, everybody, everybody knew we probably couldn't go that high, but we, you said you would look around the 200 range and everybody up here agreed that we could get close. Um, we were hoping to find a, you know, a, a good used one, you know, with maybe, you know, a few miles on it, you? you know, uh, this is one. a new truck. No, yeah. this one you're talking about. This one's about. brand this new. new. Uh, it's a 2014 Kenworth, um, brand new truck. I think we need to go ahead and. You won't get one no cheaper than that. I mean, you we're look, not going. You look. Gonna put it six off. months now. We've been looking for a used. We've looked a lot. Yes, we've sir. Looked a lot. And we, you've we already gotten us several different used items, and found good prices on them. The the problem was we 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 ended up finding out that. Um, it was hard to find one that was less than 10 years old. So they're going to be between 10 and 20 years old if you found a used one. And I just weren't comfortable with doing that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out about what it would cost us if we took that truck, ran it to rear end to somebody because of the brakes. Mm. <laughs> Is that? I'm just wondering if it's going to be. It's more been than wrecked before and because of that. We know about that. Would there be any value in selling that truck to try to get some some money back? On to make I do have I do have some issues to talk about with with it. Um, if you know, as as the time goes on in the next month's budget uh, meeting, I would like to discuss the truck and and some options that we feel that we do have. I'd like to authorize him. Let's go ahead and make a motion. Would I need to make a motion, or can we do that on consensus? Uh, no, that's going to have to be a motion. We got to have a uh, we got to have a budget amendment, don't we? We made one amendment for the two hundred thousand. So we would have to make an amendment for the additional 15 or three. Well, we, would it be three or would it be 15? How would that work, Jim? It would be the, the revenue and spent line would have to be in order to show 15 million. It would be a lot. It would be a 35 million. So we can go ahead and approve it. Is that right? Okay. Five years. Five years. Five years. So you're talking about 3,000 years. Because, I mean, this is not like something that just popped up tonight. I mean, this was already discussed and brought up, and we've been, we've been talking we, about this. If we authorize them to do it now, we're not going to get it to June. If we That's wait, pushing it. if we wait, we're not going to get one. For Chief, did they say that they could, because we have to have, I mean, you know, they're working on time frames. I mean, is there any kind of expeditious time? Can they do it? Yeah. When we were down there, we went there three weeks ago and did all this work, and they had another fire department that was actually ordering four trucks at that time. And we were trying to get ours in before those four, four trucks came in. And he told us that uh, if we could get it in between the next two or three weeks, he would assure us that ours would be complete by June uh, at budget time. And he would put it in front of the next, those, those four. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a payment budgeted for this calendar year. It's just the 3000 we, we, we need to make this happen. Make a motion. This make is a motion. A, I'll make a motion. That, right. that, yeah, I make a motion that we would allow the chief to go ahead with the purchase of this truck, and we'll come back and make a budget amendment for the three thousand uh, dollars over the five-year period. I just feel like if we don't do this, chief, that 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 your guys are not having the equipment they need. They're not um, driving the safe truck. Um, somebody's house catches on fire. That truck's gonna get there. Uh, I would assume there's some warranty there. I would think. I don't know, but I would think that any warranty work would save us on keeping up a 40-some-year-old truck. Uh, and we're not going to find a truck any cheaper than this. And I want to commend you for such diligence to go out and find this truck for us. Um. <clears throat> yeah, we did, we did, you know, the, as an example, the last one we bought in 2005 was 365000 
so we went from 365 to 215 and I want to also add that I don't have the figures in front of me so I'm, I'm saying 215 you know it could be 215 three hundred dollars I, I don't remember the exact number so well no I mean you don't, don't hold me to that because I don't have it in front of me but uh, but we have scaled back um, and we, we get in a rural truck that we can take in a rural area they can also go into city limits they can tie to fire hydrants it's got a large pump on it it's got um, it's going to have enough cabinetry that we can get the truck certified with all the equipment that we need to carry um, so I, I think we'll be okay with it I've read the reviews of the company that's going to build it um, talk to other fire departments there's probably six of them in Moore County that uh, different departments have in Moore County that this this company has built uh, there in Moore County so we we've had good reviews of it uh, no issues good warranty work if there was any warranty to do so um, we are comfortable with it all right mr. McQueen's made a motion I, I'll second it chief can I can I just have you share the importance of the truck for the community I'll do that. I mean I the, Im the importance. What's the importance of this truck to community? Uh, dependability is the main thing. Uh, to be able to go and, and get to the areas that we need to get to with the amount of water that, that the truck that we're replacing, uh, it, we were trying to come up with something very close or very similar to what we had. Um, and and that, chose, that became a problem because of the amount of water that we wanted to carry. Um, and that drove the price up. and. The chassis and uh, because of the uh, the weight and the weight limits and things like that so um the, it's very important for us to get this vehicle and get it out in the community in the rural <laughs> areas to, to go ahead and be effective in our firefighting okay. and this also gives us points so would that help our insurance rates and absolutely will help that lower. um uh, anytime that truck we got right now goes out to a fire it, it's just like it's, haul, it's hauling water it's not a fire truck We'll say water. And it's a water tender is what it is. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I got a motion from Mr. McQueen. Do I have a second? A second. Okay, second from Eddie. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right. Thank you, Chief. And uh, while we're in that vein, I am going to get uh, Mr. Stubbs to come up to the microphone, and he and the city manager need to talk to us about the burn the machine leaf machine that burned and what we're going to be doing about that yes sir mr. mayor I uh, I had prepared to discuss that in, in my manager's report but okay. I I'd also would like to I would be, I'd welcome mr. Stubbs comments as well you can tell us what happened <laughs> okay on our uh, older leaf machine which is uh, 21 years old it's a 1993 model uh, the starter shorted out on it and in the process of trying to put it out it just the fire got away completely destroyed the engine and the wiring uh, part of the machine uh, I contact ODB which is Old Dominion Brush Company about <coughs> repair parts the machines 21 years old that's not an option as far as uh, getting the parts for it um, in the process of uh, talking to him he gave me some prices on a uh, new machine uh, along with uh, Amic equipment uh, actually got three quotes and uh, he gave us a, a price of forty forty three thousand dollars. Uh, Amic Equipment gave us a price of sixty five thousand, and also uh, Extreme uh, was forty thousand. Uh, the Extreme was uh, underpowered; it would not work for what we needed for. And uh, we actually went on and put in a, uh, a purchase with uh, ODB to actually purchase another leaf machine. On top of everything else, the, I looked at it down there, and the inside of the hopper was full of holes. Yeah, the, the, the sand had eaten away the the uh, bed. The, hopper. the bed had uh, multiple rust holes. Where it's actually the age of it's 21 years old, and you know you get wet material in there, and you can't clean it, but so good. In 21 years, it's just the machine is just wore out. We've actually put two motors on that uh, that leaf machine, so it's it's served its purpose. How old is the other one that we have? Uh, the other one is a 2007. Yeah, a little better. Yep. Uh, I guess the main thing is we just need to ask everybody, citizens, to bear with us because we're going to be a little slower getting the leaves up until we get this resolved. Uh, yep. And uh, I noticed that we've got some guys out there working real hard with pitchforks right now picking up leaves. So it's, uh, we, it's tough. We do. And uh, usually we try to give everybody a pick up a week. Uh, when the machine went down, as of last week, I actually let them start back on the routes to try to get a jump on it for the following week. 
uh, that'll hold us a few days, at, you know, at most. But, you know, time we pick it up, they're putting the stuff back out there. So, we're, you know, we're doing all we can do to try to keep up with it. And, uh, you know, we're looking probably about the middle of January before we actually get the, the uh, new machine in. So I'm hoping we won't be that far behind before the new one gets here. And we ended up getting some money. Yep. Insurance. He's going to tell us about that in a little bit. Good deal. Uh, uh, Billy, I know on this, the older machines, we were having to replace impellers mm -hmm. and housings and stuff like that. Did they make a concession on these new machines to solve some of that issue? Or? No, there's there's nothing you can do. Uh, the sand's just going to eat it up. We've actually purchased the, the uh, impeller and liner and had them rhino lined to try to save on them. Mm -hmm. and. There's nothing you can do, you know, you, you prolong it maybe a month, but there's nothing you can do to actually keep the, you know, the sand from eating them up. You have anything else for us tonight, sir? Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to give uh, our holiday garbage schedule Thank you. while I'm up here. Um, city office is going to be closed the 24th, 25th, and 26th. I have uh, got with my garbage guys. We're going to come in the 26th and pick up uh, December 24th, which is a Wednesday, and the 25th, which is a Thursday, on that Friday. Uh, I'll actually be giving out notes, going door to door, putting out notes for the schedule. Also, uh, January 1st, which is uh, a Thursday, we'll be picking up the second, which will be that, fo that following Friday. Thank you. Gail, did you have anything for us tonight? Thank you. Okay. Zach, anything further? Uh, Jerry? That's on what day? Saturday. This coming Saturday? This coming Saturday, okay. Is that just football there? <laughs> or the <clears throat> okay. okay, so let me go over so that everybody will understand that we're have, right now we're having basketball registration through the 9th of January, and then the late uh, sign-up will be the 12th through the 16th of January, correct? Uh, yes, please. Well, you go ahead first. Uh, so I want to come in, Jerry, for oh, stepping man. into this role. Uh, I think he's going to get this started the third season, of course. And he's done a really good job with a short notice and a short staff. And I haven't heard no complaints. I mean, I know you might hear one or two there, but I haven't heard any. And I've been up that ball field quite a few nights. We got one from our last game Thursday night. The football cheerleaders, that's a tough go. And it can be tough. And I haven't heard anything. <laughs> that's, that's dealing with the public. You're right. I mean, that, there's nothing. I, we've been doing it 13 years and never seen it. <clears throat> and Candace has done more than a lot of paid employees have for a lot of stuff. She's been helping us out at the museum, and we just can't thank you enough for what you've been doing. Thank you so much.
Yeah, and uh, Jerry doesn't know the concept of 40-hour week. There is no such thing to him. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Jerry, who, who's using the fields at night? Um, Non-city-related. Are you aware of anybody? I, I was told that uh, some folks moved some uh, soccer goals from South Hamlet down to... Yeah, at the fairground. Traveling team. Traveling team yeah. is that what they call Travel it? Team. Yeah, doing a great job with them, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. He keeps it mowed. So they're taking care of the field uh -huh. and all? So actually, it's, it's a really good thing because it's feeding, that's uh, travel teams that's feeding kids from all over the county. That's, uh, Just want to make sure you're aware of who's down there. Don't want anybody down there damaging anything. And <laughs> that's a fact. Yeah. And also, just all the, the fields and stuff that's got gates, and I'll make sure the gates stay locked up on those things at night. Um, so nobody can get in there and do any damage or whatever. <clears throat> I went out there about one call on that one closest to the National Armory, the National Guard. You could you could see it somewhat, but yeah, they are trying to see that. Thank you, Robert Brown, water department. Nothing. Everything's flowing freely up there. Okay, we appreciate what you do. Thank you. And I got Billy. Got. I haven't gotten the police chief yet. I apologize for that. I had I got the fire chief on my mind, and then the leaf machine. I just left <laughs> you in the lurch. I have questions for you. Uh, just congratulations on your appointment. Um, in watching the events going on in our country with police departments, I know that uh, there's been some money earmarked for body cameras for officers. Um, it's not a lot of money, but there, there was some money earmarked through the federal government. You would try to figure out uh, what avenues we might have to try to get a hold of some of that money. Probably be very tough now. Probably a lot of folks wanting to get in on that money. Uh, I'm going to contact uh, Richard Hudson's office and see if possibly they may give us a little information on that. But that's something I'd like to see us working on. If you could check on that for us. <coughs> Again, 
It's, it, it's coming. Wh wh whether you want it or not, it's coming. It can yeah. be a good tool. We had, um, you were there, I worked with you whenever the car cameras came out. Some of the same issues he talked about was there. You can like it or not like it, but the fact is it's coming. And if you can check in, maybe getting some, from some of that money that's out there, maybe getting the first hit off that first release of the money whenever it's going to come off, um, need to look into it. Check uh, the website for North Carolina Chiefs and the North Carolina Association of uh, Police Executives. And I believe there's been some chatter going on there about some policies for body cameras. So you might check their websites. Anything else for Chief? Mm -hmm. All right, where have I gotten to? I've gotten now, I believe I'm to Jill, am I, if I'm correct. <laughs> Anything? Thank you. Appreciate you managing our money. You're doing an excellent job. And. Uh, City Clerk. <coughs> Our city employees did an excellent job getting everything together down there, and I talked to Doc. I said, I said, if you don't do anything else, Doc, you make sure those lights are going to come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he got me when I got down. He said, Mayor, they're going to come on. <laughs> okay. But we were real, it was real good to have Miss Locklear there, and uh, she had a good time, too. So that's, uh, that's going to be a real bonus for the city of Hammond. Just an uh, exciting person. She's doing a real good job with her athletics, and that's great. Uh, city manager. Mayor Bayless and City Council, I, I first would like to apologize in advance to our citizens as we may likely fall behind on our leaf and limb remo removal services as Mr. Stubbs was discussing. This is a key service and um, it is a key service that we provide to our citizens and it, uh, it is unfortunate that it occurred right here at the, at the peak of leaf season. Um, this was the older of our two machines and it will be an expensive replacement. Um, but uh, with only one of the two, we, we will fall behind to some extent in the interim. And uh, I just want to apologize in advance and thank citizens for their patience and their understanding. I want to thank Mr. Singletary for the presentation of the plaque. Um, I don't think anyone in this room knows, but Mr. Singletary also made me a plaque several weeks ago welcoming me to the job. And I am very thankful for that. And I. Um, if, if you would, please stay when we adjourn because I want to get my picture taken. Um, we have a handful of events. This is the most wonderful month of the year. Um, the Hamlet Christmas Parade is Thursday, December the 11th. The city offices <coughs> will close at 3 p.m., uh, 30 minutes before the parade starts. We'll look forward to uh, seeing the community on Thursday. Um, we have the employee retiree Christmas luncheon on Friday, December the 12th. The city offices will be closed from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. We would like to apologize for that inconvenience to citizens. Every year, Hamlet recognizes and thanks all of its current and retired employees by serving them lunch. And the food is prepared by the fire department, and we are very thankful for that service as well. Our old-fashioned Christmas is this weekend. Uh, it, it will be on Hamlet Avenue on Friday night, the 12th, both uh, 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. Um, on Saturday night, uh, 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. on Main Street, December the 13th. Um, Hamlet has a goodie day, and it is on Tuesday, December 23rd. Some of the employees bring different foods and snacks during the lunch hour, and it's a good time to just... Uh, uh, spend some time together um, on our lunch breaks before we depart for Christmas. Uh, we will remain open during that time. Um, just to reiterate, um, we, uh, we will be closed the 24th, 25th, and 26th, and we have uh, adjusted our sanitation schedule to prevent from interfering with the holiday, as Mr. Stubbs was uh, discussing. 
just to remind you that our mid-year planning retreat has been moved to review the budget thus far and to make arrangements in planning the budget calendar for the 2015-2016 fiscal year. Um, we will uh, meet here on January 15th at 4.30 p.m. The hiring process is said to take 60 to 90 days, and I believe it. Um, since we last met, uh, the city was able to fill the police chief vacancy. I would like to welcome Scott Waters in his first city council meeting as the acting police chief. Um, we will fill the museum director and downtown coordinator position by the end of this month, and we will have several others, others to fill in early January, such as the Parks and Recreation Director, um, a ca two captains, one of investigation and another of patrol, as well as a cemetery groundskeeper and a sanitation collector. Um, I really look forward to this exciting time uh, to have some fresh faces and new ideas to come to, uh, come to our city. That's all that I have to report. I hope that everyone has a wonderful holiday and ample time to spend with their families and uh, those of whom who uh, matter to us most. So happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Comments for the manager or questions of the manager? That was a very good yeah, report. Very, very detailed. <laughs> we appreciate that. And uh, I would like to say that uh, Mr. Abernathy has been very good yeah, at keeping yeah. us up on what's going on and what's happening and it's, uh, we have really, it's made life a whole lot easier. And we appreciate that, thank you. Uh, Mr. Morphis, did you have anything for us at this point? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay, at this time, we're going to, I need a motion to go into closed session per General Statute 143.18.11a3 to discuss matters within the attorney-client privilege. 143.318.11a4 to discuss matters relating to economic development. Uh, 143.318.11 to discuss attorney-client privilege and a matter of Veach versus the City of Hamlet. Uh, item A5 to discuss real estate acquisition and A6 to discuss a personnel matter. I so moved to go into closed session. Second, <coughs> Mr. Clewis. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, at this time we'll be going into closed session. Go back and pick up item number four with the adoption of the minutes, the regular meeting and closed session for September the 9th, and the regular. <coughs> Uh, yeah, just uh, just a couple things. Um, appreciate your work on getting busy on that fire truck. I'm proud to say that <clears throat> that's going to become a reality. Um, it was hard to get that included in our budget with the issues we're facing, but as we've talked before, our infrastructure is uh, aging, as is most small cities. And hard decisions are going to have to be made. Um, evident by the lease machine <laughs> burning up. Ironically enough, 
fire department's going to respond to that call with trucks that's 40 years old. And it's my commitment on this board, I can't speak for anyone else, it's my, my commitment to make sure our employees have what they need to do the job, especially when it's a safety issue for the town. Um, moving on, um, would like to thank the uh, Downtown Business Development Association and all their members for all they do for our town. Um, Main Street uh, and Hamlet Avenue, old fashioned Christmas coming up, they're, they're putting that on, they're sponsoring that. And I've been down here and talked to some of the folks and they're doing a lot of hard work. Those folks love this town and they're putting forth the effort. They're stepping up when other people will not step up. Um, also uh, with um, that same organization, there was a need for the uh, Christmas parade to have someone else to organize it and move forward. This group stepped up and did an outstanding job. I'm going to do something I probably shouldn't do. I'm going to call it a few people's names that really been um, pivotal and huge in keeping that going for the uh, old fashioned Christmas and the parade. Um, Bernice Owens <clears throat> done an outstanding job on Hamlet Avenue. Um, I think she actually purchased a, a flag for the city her own money um, and she's put forth her own money on Hamlet Avenue a lot um, and then some folks I want to mention for the parade Ron Mayo uh, Bobby Singletary Alan Thames um, David Lindsay Kim Lindsay they've they've all stepped up and, and uh, helped lead the charge to keep the Hamlet Christmas parade and I'm, I'm proud to say that's gonna keep going as long as uh, as far as the city staff as well for stepping up I know y'all handed out some information as well. Appreciate you know, all that. I would say I had um, several folks contact me from as far away as Lumberton um, inquiring when the old fashioned Christmas is going to be taking place. Um, so that made me feel good that some, you know, two or three counties away these folks are actively looking um, to come to our town and hopefully um, spend a little money here and bring a little uh, economic impact for us. Um, also, during the Christmas season, uh, I would like to you know, discourage everybody to be safe. Um, spend locally when you can, if you can. Um, spend some of your money with some of these small town businesses that um, help offset some of the tax burdens that you as homeowners face. Um, I think that's huge um, that, we, that we support these businesses. Um, look forward to Friday to the uh, employee luncheon. Look forward to that. It'll be my first one in four years. Um, get to connect with old friends and see some old friends and some new faces, and um, really look forward to that. Um, something that I think is very special. And to the fire chief, um, seems like everything we do that involves cooking, um, <clears throat> receptions, you always put on a tremendous spread. I'm just gonna throw out shout out for you on that. Um, other than that, I, I'm proud of where we are. Um, agree, disagree. Um, I think we've done some good things, done some bad things. We haven't got along all the time. Uh, and that's fine. If we set up here and agree with everything, uh, we're not moving forward. Um, so I'm proud of where we are, and I hope the city is uh, on board with the, the new faces and moving forward in a positive manner. Um, I think that's all. I think that's all I have. Next Lewis. Uh, I have several things. Uh, first of all, last meeting I mentioned about the stoplight or the turn lights at Highway 177 and 74. Um, I had a TAC meeting last month in November and I talked to a uh, Chuck Dumas. He's the Division's Operation Engineer Division 8 in Aberdeen and he sent me an email and the email says um, you ask about the left turn error for left turns from US 74 on the NC 177 just wanted to give you a quick update signal materials additional signal heads etc have been ordered around the third week of November the signal plan revision is in design in our Raleigh office we anticipate signal plans mid to end of December. So 
So the installation would be sometime after the first of the year. Uh, says if he learns of any changes, he'll let us know. So it looks like that is going to be a reality. So I'm thankful for that. Uh, I'd also like to thank Jerry and all his hard work. And I think it's a great thing you're doing, Jerry, as far as a cookout for the volunteers and stuff like that. Uh, I appreciate you doing that. I'd like to congratulate Scott on his new position. Uh, David, I'm sorry. I heard about your grandfather passing. I'm sorry to hear about that. We have had you in our prayers, and uh, we will keep you in our prayers. Um, I'd like to thank Zach and Ken. They do a fantastic job. That's, it's another situation where we hired one employee and we got two. <laughs> so, you know, that was money well spent. I don't know if she don't trust that. I won't go there. No. <laughs> so, but we appreciate you. We really, really appreciate all your hard work and everything that you've done, Candace. Uh, thank you just not enough, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I won't be able to make the Christmas parade. We were trying to work things out and different things. I had to be off for a funeral today and just time off work. I'm not going to make it, and I'm sorry about that. But and I'd like to reiterate what Jesse said. The Business <coughs> Development Association picked up the parade. Ron Mayo, Bobby Singletary, different ones. Like he said, I hate to start calling names, but... Kim, Lindsay, David, all of them have done a great job, and we appreciate that because uh, we do want to keep the parade here in Hammond. And so we thank all of them and their hard work. Um, I had talked to Robert Brown, it's probably been several months ago, and he was supposed to have a meeting with Jim Perry. Uh, did y'all have that meeting? Okay, and it was about our infrastructure and different things like that. Can you tell us anything about it? Would you step up to the mic and tell us, please? Or Marcus, was he there also? Um, generally, we, we did meet with uh, Jim Perry. And um, uh, like every other um, small municipality and large municipality, um, aging water and sewer lines is becoming a, a, a bigger and bigger issue and uh, uh, this is, uh, we're not alone in, in this, uh, this, uh, this problem, but uh, our water and sewer lines are, are getting older and older uh, uh, every, every day. And um, one, what, what, this pro what this project uh, it, uh, is, is what we're, we're uh, going to map out our water and sewer lines um, with GIS so we know exactly where they are. A lot of these old maps um, are, 70, 80 years old or older. Um, and some of these maps are in people's heads. And we, we have um, a number of employees who have dedicated more than half of their life to uh, working um, uh, with, this, with this city. And um, you know, once they leave, a lot of knowledge will not be able to be transferred unless we get it recorded. Um, and and uh, at, for example, you know, like case in point, mapping our water and sewer lines so we know exactly where they are. Um, that's, uh, that's a really important project, and we uh, will be working on that in the spring. Good, because that's, uh, I understand some of our grant is going to be based on whether we have this information, what the age of our infrastructure is, and things like that. So it's a real necessity, something we need. Uh, back to Robert. Thank you, Robert, for getting the water straightened out water I hadn't heard any issues we were there for a while everybody was complaining about water but I don't think anybody said thank you for it and I appreciate that and my water's fine I don't have any problems or anything so I appreciate you getting it straightened out and uh, I'd also uh, didn't know until I got here tonight that Councilman uh, Martin's wife's been in the hospital and she's in the hospital even now so in Charlotte and we want to keep her in our prayers have some extensive surgery, so we will keep her in our prayers also. So hopefully, everything's good. Thank you. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Mr. Martin? Well, <clears throat> I wasn't going to mention it, but for the sake of time, I don't have a whole lot to say. Uh, 
I'm going to leave here and go straight to Charlotte as soon as I finish the meeting tonight. Uh, but we will not meet again until <clears throat> over in January, so I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Mr. Bowie? Um, I, I think everybody's kind of covered everything, so I won't reiterate it all, but uh, <coughs> I do want to congratulate uh, you again, Chief. I spoke to you last week, but just, you know, again, congratulations. And uh, we look forward to the uh, Christmas luncheon on Friday. Uh, as mentioned before, Chief Knight, we know that uh, whatever's put on, it'll be good. So I'm not going to question how you're going to do it and what you're going to do because it's always good. So um, The parade, excited about that. I, I think there was trying to, some works of trying to get us all together in the parade. It just time schedules and other rides and, and uh, all that, you know, we're not all going to be together, but we will pretty much all be in the parade. So um, I do. We're, <laughs> yes, that's right. We're covered. So we'll be in the parade. But uh, and I look forward to that and do thank all the ones that put that on because uh, that could have been bad if we lost that. It's been many years we've had that parade in the city of Hamlet. It means a lot, uh, not just to the people in this room, but the people in the community, period. Uh, when that rumor got out, phones were ringing, texts were coming in. It was probably the most calls I think I ever received. Uh, so that's about all I can say is just have a... Yeah, it just... I was um, going to touch on that in yeah, a minute. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll, I'll let you. But uh, but regardless, we, we've got it back, and it's going to stay here in Hamlet. We're not going to give it up. So uh, And whatever we got to do to continue it on, we'll do it. Other than that, you know, I do wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, be safe. Everybody be safe. That's the main thing. Because there are the crazies out there this time of year. That, and uh, we have to just be careful for. And, and uh, I really can't think of anything else. You know, just make sure you, you know, you're leaving home. You know, don't leave lights plugged up and things like that. I, you know, just candles burning. You know, this is the time of year where everybody's doing that. So just kind of keep in mind to turn that stuff off before you leave. Um, Certainly don't want anyone losing their home at this time of the year. Any time, but this time especially. So that's, that's all I have, Mayor, unless you have. All right, thank you. Uh, first off, uh, regarding the left turn traffic signal, the city of Hamlet has been trying for 40 years at least that I know of to get that left turn signal in there. And even during all the years of the beach traffic, we couldn't get that left turn signal in there. And now we have, so... Whatever has been done by our council that has helped do that is, is great, graciously appreciated. The, uh, again, thanks to the HBDA and to the uh, Friends of Hamlet. Friends of Hamlet has worked with this issue about the parade also, plus the fact they decorated at the library. They do that every year. But what happened was back in the uh, springtime, or right about the summertime, we got a call from uh, the Rotary. And the Rotary just basically told us, said, look, we just don't have enough people to pull this uh, parade off this year. We're just down. And, of course, all of our volunteer organizations are, are, are really hurting for members. But uh, we contacted the HBDA people, Ron Mayo, and uh, they immediately got a meeting together. Uh, several of us went down. Gail and I went to the meeting, and uh, several others went to the meeting. And they said, hey, I believe we can do this. And, of course, we do have to thank Ms. Reba Dilley, who was with the Rotary Club, for her help. And she has helped direct these people. But we're going to have really a, just a great parade this year. And it's just, I'm so thankful to everybody that pulled together in town for it. I'm also thankful that we now have a manager on board. I am so proud of that fact. I'm proud that we've got a police chief on board now, uh, full time, and that you know things are, are progressing. And, of course, the council did not, during the period of time that there was so much upheaval, the council did not want to put somebody in place of anything because this is the job of the city manager. And the city manager is the one that had to make these decisions and live with his decisions. So we didn't want to force upon him things that uh, really were up to him. And we do appreciate the job he's done so far. He's been very informative to the uh, city council. He keeps us informed as to what's going on. We... Uh, Again, we hope everybody shows up for the parade on Thursday evening. And I guess the last thing that I really want to say is this has been a rocky year for this council. Uh, I didn't expect at the time that I took over as mayor that, that all this was going to happen. But so many things have happened this year. 
And although people disagree, and which everybody has a right to do it, the council has really come together to make the city operate. And I cannot thank them enough for what they've done. I'm looking forward to next year, and I believe we're going to have a better year than we had this year, and things are really progressing. Our thanks to the city employees. You see them out here on the street, please stop and tell them thank you because they don't, they, politics doesn't bother them. They just work their heart out, and uh, we really do appreciate that. So Merry Christmas to everybody and a Happy New Year, and if you need me, call me. I'm, I'm available. I'm going to ask you that there. You talk about the city employees. Um, it takes a lot for a man to hang off the side of a truck running 35 miles per hour, 20 miles per hour, and it's, you know, 32, 33, 34 degrees outside, and it's raining. So, you know, I say that because I was going down the road the other day, and it wasn't in the 30s, but it was probably pushing 40. And, you know, I see two men hanging off the back of a truck, rain suits, going down the road to pick up trash. I mean, that's a, that's a job, people. And, you know, so when you do see them, I've tried to catch them now. Just tell them, you know, thank you for what you do. I mean, that, that's, that's a tough job. I don't care who you are. <laughs> and one other thing, please shop Hamlet. If you don't do anything else, go around and visit with the merchants. Uh, I've been going around town this past couple of weeks just visiting with all of the merchants and telling them how much we appreciate them being in town. And if you can do that, that's a great big help. Anyone else have anything? If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. And thanks again for everybody that came tonight. We're always glad to see you.